evening and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their continued service to the gospel truth. And of course, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you as my, part of my viewing audience with those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I'm standing in need of. And so this evening, of course, before we do get to the message, I do have a song and a prayer list. So right now we'll go through the prayer list, and then we will get to our song. So right now we are praying this evening, especially on behalf of uh, Annette Jeffrey. Miss Geraldine Keyes, Emma Jean Hayes, Elizabeth Adams, Yvonne Davis, Ahmad Aubrey family, the Brianna Taylor family, Teresa Watson, Virginia Daniels, Deborah Price, Teresa Wanzo, Josie Pitts Sr., and Joe Brokaw, uh, Jim Young, Shelton Hort Sheldon Horton, uh, Nancy Lagarde, the Richard Brooks family, the Shelley Lopez County family, and Cornelius County. Also, Sister County called and indicated that her daughter Karima is on the ventilator. So we're praying also on behalf of her daughter at this time that she will recover. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Shirley Finn, the Jacob Blake family, the Daniel Prude family, Annie Riley and the Flowers family. We're praying also on behalf of Marilyn Washington, uh, Perlene Jesse, Candace Powers, uh, Terrence Bailey, Wilma Carpenter, Sherry and Jeremy Drumgool, and Betty Williams of The Connection. And then also the bereaved family, we're praying again on behalf of Sister Betty Williams of the connection with the loss of her sister, Verley Berry. And it's my prayer that God will comfort the family during this time of their bereavement and uh, provide them with those things that he knows that they need. And of course, to provide them with the strength to accept his will and the courage to continue in life. All right, so now we're going to be listening this evening to Steve Adams, and he's going to be singing, Jesus is my friend. So right now, without any further remarks, Steve Adams, Jesus is my friend. Well,
We certainly would like to express our appreciation and our gratitude to Steve Adams for that uh, fine selection, Jesus is my friend. And he can be yours, he is certainly mine, and of course I'm going to encourage all of you to accept him and to come to him so that he will truly be your friend. And of course we are still uh, in the midst of this pandemic, I understand that the, 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 the serums have become available, what we call the... Uh, vaccine so I'm sure that people will be trying to get them so don't run over anybody trying to get there it'll, it'll all come down I'm sure it's going to be organized in an organized fashion so you just continue to trust in the Lord right now I'd like to call your attention to the book of John and that is the 16th chapter and the verse is number 24 that's John the 16th chapter verses number 24 and the Bible reads thusly, Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So it is from this verse tonight that I am selecting to deal with the subject of joy. All right? And so as I deal with this particular subject, it is necessary that we understand the definition of joy. And I have learned that joy is a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. And as Christians, we have this great pleasure of happiness knowing that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rose from the grave a conquering king, according to Luke 24 and 46. And he is now seated on the right hand of the Father God in heaven. And that's Hebrews 10 and the verses number 12. And our hearts 
Yes, indeed, our hearts, our minds should be full of joy because as Christians, we have been called by the gospel. 2 Timothy 1 and the verses number 9. And Jesus has given us the assurance that he will be with us always, even to the end of the world. And that's Matthews 28 and 20. And so again, we're dealing with joy. And so our hearts should be overjoyed with the knowledge that the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrews 13 and 5. Now some of you might fade away from the fold, but you can always come back because the Lord, he's not going to leave us. You might leave him, but you just do, do need to come on back to the house of the Lord so that you can receive all the benefits of his blessings. Now, we are currently experiencing uh, this pandemic, COVID-19. Now, there have been other worldwide pandemics, cholera, bubonic plague, smallpox, and influenza, are some of the most brutal killers in human history. And outbreaks of these diseases across the international borders are properly defined as pandemic, especially smallpox, which throughout history has killed between 300 and 500 million people in its 12,000 year existence. Now, as children of God, we should be, we should know fully, all right? Let me just say that again. As children of God, our joy should be full, knowing that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms 27 and the verse is number one. And then again, joy is what we're dealing with this evening. God has assured us that in the time of trouble, and these are truly times of trouble, according to Psalms 27 and the verses number 5, he shall hide us in his pavilion, uh -huh, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. So we need to understand that when you trust in the Lord and true and for this being for those of us who are Christians to know that the Lord will hide us. Now, now just understand, that's a special place that the Lord has for all of us who are his children, his Christians, his born again children, all right? But now, he's not willing that any should perish, all right? And he came to seek and save those that were lost. So there may be some in the pavilion, uh-huh, who may not, uh, let's say, perhaps be really worthy to be there, but that's okay because the Lord is seeking to save those that are lost, just as my message is to the Christians, but hopefully those who are not Christians will understand the benefits that we as Christians receive because we are born-again children of God, all right? So again, we should continue to be joyful, knowing that our God, is alive. And the Bible says over there in Revelations 1 and verses 18, Jesus says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. All right. Now, we need to understand that according to Acts 17 and 28, that it's in him, uh -huh, the Lord, that we have our very being. That's how we move. That's how we are. It's in him that we move and have our being. We exist solely because of God. So we should be joyful and rejoicing, knowing that Jesus stands ready to provide us with our requests. John 14, 13, he says, And whatsoever you shall ask, uh -huh. In my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So we need to understand that that's just one of the great blessings that the Lord offers to us, to those who have uh, 
decided to make him their choice. He provides us with all of those wonderful blessings that we are in need of. He says, anything that you will ask of me, uh -huh, ask of my Father in my name. I'm going to give this to you. Why? So that the, the Son can be glorified in the Father. All right? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. And that's over there in John 14 and 13. Joy. We're talking about joy this evening, and I'm sure that all of us have a desire to be joyful and to have that happiness. So I just want you to remember, as I said, the Lord stands ready to provide you with your request. You remember old blind Bartimaeus over there in Luke 18 and 41? Jesus was passing by, and Bartimaeus, a blind man, he couldn't see, but he heard the commotion. And then he began to question those that were around him, and, and he asked them, well, what, what's going on? What's all this about? And they said, oh, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And then, of course, when he heard that, he knew what was up. Then he shouted out and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And then, you know, the people around him just said, hey, be quiet. Nobody wants to hear that. But he got louder. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And with that, Jesus stopped right in his tracks. He looked around and he said, bring him to me. Then when old, old Bartimaeus got in front of Jesus, Jesus asked him, what is it that you want me to do for you? All right? Now, I'm pointing this out specifically tonight so you'll understand that this is one of the blessings that we receive. The Lord is standing by right now uh, to give you uh, the answer, to provide you. Now, I'm talking to Christians now, because if you are not a Christian, then you, you can't receive this benefit by simply calling on the Lord. But he says, who, 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 and whatsoever you shall ask uh -huh. in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And this example here of Bartimaeus who cried out, called out to Jesus. So as Christians, when we call out to Jesus, he's asking us the same thing. What is it? What is it that you want me to do for you? And so as his child, you can say, Lord, whatever it is that you need or whatever it is that you want, you need to present that to the Lord. And those things will come to pass as it is the will of the Lord to make that happen. And then we just need to understand that it is the blood of Jesus. Uh -huh. It is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sins. That's over in 1 John 1 and the verses number 7. And I guess the best thing that we can accept and understand is that there are great benefits. That's right, and that's what I'm talking about in talking about this joy, are the great benefits that we receive uh -huh, by being his children. All right? The Lord provides us with many benefits. I know we, we want to get a job that has all the good fringe benefits, you know, health benefits and all, but I tell anybody to let you know that if you come to the Lord, he's going to provide you with many benefits. And if we find, if you go to the book of Psalm 68 and the verse of number 19, the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily uh -huh, loadeth up with benefits, uh -huh, even the God of our salvation. Selah. And then Psalms also, David says in 103 verse 23, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all of our iniquities, who healeth all of our diseases. Now, see, you can't beat that. You can call on the Lord and ask him to heal you from the various diseases that you might have, if you have any, or whatever it is that you want him to bless your home, bless your family, whatever it is that you need the Lord to do, he certainly will do that. And we find also in Psalms 116 and verse number 12, he says, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? Isn't that wonderful? It's a joy to know that you are a Christian, a child of God, and that he has all of those blessings just for you. And then even in the midst of this pandemic, as long as you stay faithful to him, I trust in him, he's going to hide you in his pavilion. And again, like I said, there might be some who are in the pavilion who haven't been born again, but, but that's all right because the Lord is not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance, all right? 
So we just need to keep that in mind and know that the Lord, he has a great deal of benefits for us. We can look at what he offers us. You know, he says, come to me. And why does he want you to come to him? So that you can receive the rest for your soul. And if you go over to the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30, and there you can hear him giving you an invitation. And I don't think that anybody could offer a greater invitation than this. We find Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. These are his words. He says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, look, I'm going to take your burdens away from you. I'm going to give you rest, the rest for your soul. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. In other words, the Lord says, if you come to me, I'm not going to put any more on you than you can bear. All right, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In fact, you're going to benefit immensely as a result of coming on in to the Lord's house and coming to him. He offers us rest according to uh, the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. And then what else does Jesus offer us? He offers us life, okay? And this is what we get, the sort of joy that we have knowing that the Lord has provided us with everything, including the life that we have. And if you go to the book of John, the 10th chapter, and the verses number 10, and here you can hear Jesus as he says, The thief cometh not but to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. This is what Jesus says now. He says, But I'm come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly, all right? So just keep that in mind, that when you come to the Lord and you recognize the joy that you have in serving him, this is what you get, the blessings, all the blessings that you should get. And then in the book of John 15 uh, and verse number 13, he tells us about the love he has. This is what he says. He says, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And you know what Jesus has already done. He hung, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary that we might all have a right to the everlasting tree of life. And I'm hoping and trusting this evening that perhaps you will recognize the joy that Christians receive as a result of being in the body, the body which is his church. And we get into that body by faith. And we get salvation as a result of being in that body. You know, I, I, I told you about this not too long ago. Uh, you, you remember Nicodemus, he came to Jesus by night and he wanted to know how was it possible? How could he obtain eternal life? And then Jesus told him what he needed to do. He had to be born again. That's the Savior's plan of salvation. He told him you have to be born of the water and of the Spirit. So, of course, you know, Nicodemus, he was seeking truth and wanted to know, you know, well then, Lord, how can a man be born again? Jesus had to explain to him. He wasn't talking about a physical, but a spiritual birth, okay? And so that's what we understand. And then we find in the book of Mark 16, 16, the Bible tells us, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So salvation is what the Lord offers. And then we started off with our, our, our starting verse this evening, uh, the verse that we use for our subject of joy, and that's John 16 and 24. And that, again, what did the Lord say? He said, hitherto you have asked nothing, all right? Let's listen to him again, John 16 and the verse number 24. He says, hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. You haven't asked him for anything. All right? But then he says, ask, and you shall receive, uh -huh, that your joy, your happiness may be full. And I know that today we all uh, are experiencing situations where we need some joy. We need to be happy because there is so much death and sickness all around us, and people are dying all over the Bay Area, all over the country, all over the world. All right? This pandemic is a killer. All right? So if you are in the body, in the way, with Jesus, then you don't have anything to worry about it. And even if you should fall victim of the pandemic, 
then you should know what happens on the other side. Jesus said, you come on to me, I'm going to give you rest for your soul. So at some point in time, we all are going to quit the busy walks of life. Now, I don't think you are mistakenly thinking that you're going to be here forever. No, 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 you know better than that. Uh, I've been telling you that before. And, and there are places, there are cities for the dead, quiet cities for the dead. Over there in Oakland, there's Evergreen, a quiet city. Over there in Richmond, there's a Rolling Hill, a quiet city for the dead. So just understand, we're all going. We came here leaving. And if you remember, maybe you don't, but anyway, when, when the doctor came and smacked you on your behind and you said, why? Well, you were on your way right then. That was the beginning. So just understand that we're all going the way that the Lord had. The Bible says over there in the book of uh, Hebrews 9, 27, and it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Jesus offers you peace, all right? The peace that nobody else can give you. And you just need to know that's Luke 2 in the verse number 14. And Jesus has prepared a place for you. And this is also in the book of John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 4. You know what he says. Uh huh. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it weren't so, I would have told you. He says, but I'm going now to prepare a place for you so that... Where I am, you can be also. He says, I'm coming again. That's what he says. I'm coming again that where I am, there you may be also. So I trust that if you're not in the Lord's body, that you'll think about real soon about getting into the body. How do you get into it? By faith. That's how you come to the Lord Jesus, by faith. So the Bible says, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Believe what you heard, Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Then you must repent of all your past sins, Luke 13, 3 and 5. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall also likewise perish. And then you need to confess the sweetest name on mortal tongues, Matthew 10, 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father, which is in heaven. Then last but not least, you must be willing to be buried in liquid grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. By doing those things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. I'm Alan Jackson, and I'm inviting you to join us again next week. If it's God's will, when the gospel truth once again come your way. Until then, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.